Hello, and welcome to AFM Ready. I'm your host, Kelly Miller, Recruitment Coordinator for the School of Accounting and Finance at the University of Waterloo. And every week, we like to focus on a new topic relating to the accounting and financial management program. Today, we'll spend the next 30 minutes talking about how you can get international business experience through the SAF International Study Trip. Pull up a seat. You won't want to miss this. Joining us for AFM Ready today is upper year AFM student, Mitchell. Mitchell, thank you for being here today. To start, can you tell us about yourself and your experience within the AFM program? Sure, Kelly. Uh, thanks for having me. So, yeah, my name is Mitchell. I'm a 4B AFM student. Uh, I've done past co-op terms in audit, in private equity, as well as investment banking. So a wide array of uh, industries there and also been quite involved throughout my four years here uh, at SAF. So I've been involved with the Hedge Finance Conference. Uh, I've been on SIF as well as uh, the international trip. Uh, We went to Hong Kong. So uh, it's incredible to think that it's already been four years uh, that uh, since I've joined AFM, I still remember attending first year events like launch your career and stuff. But uh, yeah, my my experience here over the past four years have have been great and uh, happy to talk more about it today. As the recruitment coordinator, I often have prospective students asking about international experience. The great thing about AFM, which isn't highly advertised, is that we offer upper year students the opportunity to join an international study trip. Can you tell us more about this? Sure. So the international study trip is, uh, in short, it's a full credit course that gives students the opportunity to travel abroad for a week uh, to experience various cultures and just learn about how international business is like um, in different global financial hubs. So, you know, in the past, we've went to uh, London, uh, Hong Kong. That was the trip that I was involved in uh, in second year uh, and Germany. Um, And this year, uh, things were a bit different. It was actually, but we still got to chat with people uh, in different parts of the world, like Singapore, uh, New York. Um, So those are definitely highlights. Um, And yeah, I think um, with, you know, the world becoming more and more connected and, all that stuff, I think it's really important that students get international exposure at an early stage of their career. So this is a great way uh, to do that. It sounds like this is a great course for students who are interested in overseas career opportunities or who are looking to familiarize themselves with how a business is conducted in a different country. Why did you decide to get involved in this course? Mm -hmm. So back when I was um, part of the trip in second year, uh, it it was still a relatively new concept and idea that was started up by Professor Darcy Delamere and Steve Balaban. Um, So I didn't know too much about the course. I just know, you know, it was the second year that they started it and the first year they actually did in London. And so for me, looking back, it was really three main reasons, I would say. The first one is uh, international exposure. So I was always curious to see what a career would look like outside of Canada. Um, I haven't really traveled much growing up as a kid, mostly just stayed in Toronto. Uh, so it was always awesome to look outside and be, what is a career really like beyond just Canada. And so particularly in finance, that's kind of where my interests lied. So we got to visit banks in Hong Kong, like HSBC, Barclays and Deutsche Bank. And it was really awesome to just see firms outside of the ones in Canada um, as well. We got to meet companies that I never really heard of, such as Brilliance Auto, which manufactures majority of the BMWs in China, as well as Hutchison Ports, which is one of the largest port operators in the world and a pretty big business uh, out in Asia. And so it was definitely eye-opening. So that was one reason. Another one was my background. Uh, So my family actually comes from Hong Kong and I visited a few times as a kid growing up, but you know, most of the time I would be spending time with them or with my aunts or uncles and never really got to see the global financial hub aspect of the city. And so wanted to really see the business side of the city. And so this trip really let let me see that. And uh, finally, I would say uh, just having fun and meeting new people. Um, you know, part of the trip, you get really close to your team and you bond over funny moments like, you know, running from building to building to make our next meeting on time or getting lost and trying to find each other on the subway system and just, yeah, like incredible nights out on the streets of Hong Kong with SAF alumni. Um, So meeting alumni and meeting, meeting people on the trip, those are all things that um, really stuck out for me. So those are three things that um, drew me to this trip. 
So a significant portion of the course's evaluation is tied to a one-week time period where you get the opportunity to meet with senior executives at various international firms across different countries, including, like you mentioned, the United Kingdom, Hong Kong, U.S., Canada, just to name a few. You even get the opportunity to travel, like you also said, to some of these locations. I believe your experience was a little different, though. You've done two. Your first one was to Hong Kong, and your second one was a virtual trip. Can you tell us about both of these experiences? Mm -hmm, Sure. So in second year, that was when I was a student on the trip uh, for the Hong Kong one. And then this year for the virtual Singapore trip, I was actually a TA. So really got to see both sides of it, both as a student and kind of the organizer of the trip. Um, And so starting with my Hong Kong trip, uh, definitely an amazing time. Uh, It was one week, like you mentioned. And yeah, during that week, I probably slept on average five to six hours a night. uh, And that might be an overstatement already. It's just just goes to show how jam packed our week was and how much we really got to do. And so maybe I can walk you through kind of what a day looked like um, during that trip. So, you know, at 7 a.m. is kind of when we would wake up and have breakfast. And during breakfast, we would actually do kind of a morning meeting debrief where we would have students debrief the meetings um, that we were gonna do during that day. And so they would teach other students about the companies that they were in charge of and just kind of an overview. And then 9 a.m. would be our first meeting. So for instance, we would meet a company like PwC uh, and then lunch would hit at around noon. Uh, and then because we were in Hong Kong, we would get you know local foods like dim sum. And uh, sometimes the firms would actually take us out for food. So I remember PwC actually brought us out to dim sum and um, you know we paid for the meal. And it was awesome sitting next to a partner and just bonding over some great food. Uh, and then after lunch, we would have our second meeting at around 2 p.m. and um, company would be like HSBC that we would visit. And then 4 p.m. would be another meeting. Um, for instance, we visited Hong Kong Stock Exchange and got to tour the exchange floor and everything like that. And then 6 p.m., you know, people are starting to get tired, but really that's that's uh, the good part of the day. We That's the dinner time. Uh, and usually dinner we have with uh, of the alumni of uh, SAF. So we would meet up with alumni as well as industry reps. Um, and they would, yeah, like just come out for dinner and we would have a great time uh, just bonding over food and drinks. And then 9 p.m. onwards is kind of when our team kind of spends time with ourselves with night festivities. So I remember we would visit um, this street called Temple Street, which is really popular for like shopping. Uh, we would watch the light show across the Victoria Harbor as a team. And then we would tour the famous uh, LKF Street, which is a lot of fun for those who know about it. Um, but yeah, uh, that was a great time. And then uh, pivoting over to kind of the virtual trip this year um, kind of uh, was different. Yeah, because when I was teeing for Steve Balaban, we were actually planning to go to Hong Kong again. Um, but, you know, Hong Kong had all the political issues going on with the protests. And so we thought it would be best to pivot over to Singapore. Uh, and then at the time in February, the, the pandemic kind of hit. And so we're like, okay, well, we can't go to Singapore because the outbreak started out in Asia. And so we were like, okay, well, we'll go back to London because we've you know been to London and we know the people there. And then the pandemic spread to London. And so we were like, okay, well, let's do a virtual trip. And at first that was was a bit daunting because we were like, okay, well, most of the experience really comes from visiting the companies in person and uh, doing everything in person. But uh, no, our team was very receptive to it. I think people had a blast and it was still really incredible because we got to fit more meetings during the day since we didn't have to kind of move around as much. Um, And so we got to meet more people and people were definitely more open to meeting with us because they, uh, they, they empathized for the situation. So both virtual and in person, I had a great time. And um, yeah, it was great. Some people may get the wrong idea that this is an easy course because you get to travel and meet new and exciting people, but that's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of work and effort that students have to put into this course. What are some of the things that you had to do? So I would say there's certainly, you know, a fair amount of work that goes into the trip. Um, It's an entirely student run trip, uh, student planned and student organized. And so, yeah, a common misconception is that, you know, there's not much work, but I would say the moment you join the team, you're actually split into four functional groups, as we call it. And so the first one is uh, corporate relations. And so this was a team that I was a part part of. 
Um, and so corporate relations, their job is to really set up uh, the meetings that you're going to have in whatever country you're going to and also manage the external relationships with alumni and industry reps. So some cool things that I did on the corporate relations team was I actually got to interact with some of the alumni uh, through WhatsApp. And so to this day, we still keep in touch through WhatsApp. And so it's a really good way for those who want to develop deeper connections uh, and, and are interested in seeing what companies are out there. Uh, the second group I would say is Meals and Culture. This group is responsible for booking all the lunches, the dinners, um, and tourist activities for the team. Um, really awesome group. And you basically get to, you know, you get the say of what to eat and everything. So uh, if you're a big foodie, this is the group for you. Uh, uh, logistics is another group. Uh, this group really, you know, makes sure that the team is on time, makes sure that the team gets from point A to point B safely and efficiently. Uh, it's quite tough, especially if you're in a very jam-packed city like New York or Hong Kong. Um, you know, you've never been there before, so logistics is really there to um, make sure you get from places safely. Um, in a virtual environment, though, I would say logistics is even more important um, because they're actually managing kind of the schedule, the Google Drive, and a lot of the stuff behind the scenes. So logistics is definitely uh, an important role. And finally, uh, the management team. Uh, this team kind of oversees every day-to-day -day activities, um, make sure that the other three functional groups are communicating with each other and making sure that everyone's kind of on the same page. Um, for instance, if corporate relations books a meeting um, with HSBC, then management would make sure logistics knows that and that they would put it in the schedule. That way, another meeting wouldn't get booked in the same time. Um, and so, yeah, like, you know, the planning process isn't typically what people see because it's all behind the scenes and it's it's really the bulk of the course. It's it's like the three months leading uh, up to the one week. So yeah, you, you prep for three to four months for a trip that lasts a week. So definitely a lot of work that goes into it. And it's it's really what you make out of it. Was there anything that surprised you as you made your way through both of your experiences? Um, one of the biggest surprises for me uh, for both trips was just how uh, big our alumni network is in SAF. Um, you know, it's incredible to to have people help us out and be so willing to um, set up meetings for us, uh, especially the alumni. It's they're really friendly. Uh, and so speaking to the Hong Kong trip, um, we had alumni that actually took us out. They they showed us around the city. Uh, they introduced us to other alumni in Hong Kong, and it's it's just this awesome feeling of camaraderie that you know you get when you meet somebody you never met before, but somehow they graduated from your school and you're like, wow, you know, we can be really good friends and you just click just like that. And so that was like awesome to see the Waterloo network really span all the way to Hong Kong. And um, yeah, like the alumni, I remember, uh, took us out when they showed us a lot of different places to eat. Um, they showed us different spots to have fun. And then one alumni even went as far as to inviting us to his office. And he was uh, a trader at a Japanese bank called Mizuho. And so he showed us the trading floor at his bank. Um, and it was very, very, um, um, yeah, it was very ad hoc. Like he just was like, hey guys, like you want to come to the my office like tomorrow? And we're like, well, we have some time between this time and that time. So yeah, we can drop by. And he's like, great, we'll see you then. And it was just like that, right? So very, um, very awesome. Uh, and, and especially when the pandemic hit this year, uh, we, we were really trying to still set up our meetings. Uh, and it was tough because, um, you know, we had to tell a lot of firms that we actually initially contacted told us, well, we can't have you anymore because of the pandemic and our offices restricting, you know, uh, outsiders. So, yeah, it was a bit disappointing, but our alumni was really helpful there because they were all willing to offer to talk to us still. Uh, so we we got to talk to people in Hong Kong, London and Singapore. So, yeah, it just really goes to show how big the SAF network is. And um, that was something that really surprised me because you just don't expect to see that many people from SAF across the world. And um, yeah. Have you actually been able to stay in contact with some of these people that you've met through this course? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the alumni that we met in Hong Kong, it, it, it's a it's an awesome experience because you get to meet them in a very organic environment. And so, you know, you bond with them over dinner or lunch or um, a night out and it sounds simple, but little activities like that really go a long way and it makes them remember you more. 
Um, it's, you know, different from a networking session, right? It's, it's something that, you know, both of you enjoy and you can really remember from. So yeah, I've kept in contact with a lot of the alumni um, and a lot of them have actually served as mentors for me throughout the years, uh, some of which I actually keep in contact on a more informal basis, like through WhatsApp and stuff like that. So these alumni have been great um, and we were able to, you know, contacted them again for the virtual trip, as I mentioned, um, you know, just at a, at a message away, we would just shoot them a message and they'd be like, Hey, yeah, happy to uh, do a meeting with the new team this year. So yeah, being able to keep in contact with them. That's fantastic. Do you feel like you've grown personally and or professionally from this experience? Mm-hmm. So um, definitely, I think as a second year, being able to travel across the world and meet with you know, CEOs and senior VPs of big companies uh, for a couple hours is is definitely an experience to rem- remember. And it's, it's quite scary, too, because you're actually in charge. Each student is in charge of leading one meeting. And so they would do all the due diligence, all their homework on the company. They would research it. Um, and then they would prepare questions to actually ask the company during the uh, interview portion. So, you know, you would sit in a boardroom for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and it would just be you and the team interviewing um the people across the table and so you got to make sure you're sharp you're asking the right questions sometimes um you know the questions you prepared might not be the questions that they actually want to answer and so you got to be able to read the room and so these are all things that you don't really learn through a textbook in school i would say beyond the walls of the classroom this trip really lets you kind of grow your soft skills and so i think the biggest takeaways for me was one the soft skill aspect uh, being able to communicate quickly, think on my feet, as well as just um, build relationships quickly. Like you got to make sure that um, because, you know, this is kind of a different environment. Hong Kong has different values from, you know, a Toronto. They're probably more conservative uh, as Asian culture. So you know how to um, behave properly during meetings. Um, so stuff like that um, is really important. Uh, another aspect that helped me grow professionally was building my network. Uh, as I mentioned a lot before, you know, you got to meet professionals who held senior positions and, um, you know, especially meeting these people that were across the world from you. It's really important because um, at least for me, a lot of my network is concentrated in Toronto. And so, you know, there's, you know, it's not every day that you get to have lunch with people in Asia that are like very senior. And so you never know where, um, when you might want to work, work in Asia. And, and so it, it always uh, helps out down the road. And I think the last aspect is just, we learned a lot about international issues. Um, part, like the main objective of the course is actually to basically at the end of the course, you have to write kind of an essay of some sort where you answer a question. And so the question that year was, what is Hong Kong's role in the, um, in the global financial hub? Uh, in the global financial economy and like how is it impacting china and stuff and so we learned about issues like the internationalization of see we learned about the importance of the pearl river delta learned a lot about the technology like alibaba and these tech giants in china so those are all issues that you don't hear about as much in in canada and the western world and so it really helps you give get more perspective and so uh, when i kind of got away from the trip and went back to school back to work I would always think about those things that um, are driving the growth in Asia because Asia is growing rapidly and, you know, a lot of investments are going to Asia. So understanding the landscape there uh, really helped in a lot of the roles that uh, I uh, took on afterwards. It really does sound like an eye opening experience for students. Can you tell us, did you have to apply for this? Were there any requirements or can anybody get involved? Mm -hmm. So the course selects students through an application process and the application would typically typically consist of your resume, your transcript and just like high level responses to questions to kind of gauge your interest in international business uh, and travel. And so it's not an overly difficult application. And once you kind of make it through the application round, there's an interview round with Steve and the TA. Um, and then that would be more of a, um, you know, a 10 minute interview where you're talking about just why you want to be on the trip and why uh, the school should select you. Um, and so um, there is a select group of students that get chosen. It's 12 to 14 roughly each year. And I know the group sounds small, but there's obviously a limitation to how much how many students the school can take. Right. Because there's you know logistics involved, uh, there's safety. So um, 
there is a constraint around that, but the school is working hard to provide more trips throughout the year. Um, and so, yeah, definitely be on the lookout for that. Like this year, they did two trips. Um, typically, it's only been a trip every year during the summer. And so now they're doing two trips and hopefully three trips next year. So, yeah, it's definitely expanding and um, there's plenty of opportunity to go around. So I would imagine that there is a cost associated with this above and beyond tuition fees. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. Do you know what those costs are? Yeah. So typically uh, the the course kind of quotes um, $5,000, but that's like the upper bound and the most you're expected to pay. I don't think anybody actually from any past trips has paid $5,000. Um, speaking from experience on the Hong Kong trip, uh, I paid roughly like 2000 out of pocket and that consisted of my flight ticket and personal spending. Um, and the personal spending aspect was a lot. So yeah, like it, it's, it's, it's how much you want to spend, uh, the school because it has a lot of like, um, I guess like subsidization and scholarships in place. Uh, a lot of the trip is actually subsidized. Um, but I wouldn't count on that fact. Obviously the 5,000 is just kind of the estimate, but yeah, the school sometimes would accommodate, uh, by paying for the hotels, by paying for certain meals. So SAF has been really helpful in that sense to make this trip more accessible to students. So I wouldn't um, worry too much about the cost. Uh, if the cost is drawing you away, still apply and the school would do their best to find a way to accommodate for you, whether it's through scholarships or bursaries or some way, some form. Um, um, yeah. I think in the end, though, the value and the experience that you get certainly outweighs the cost that you would pay for this program. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. Would you recommend this course to other students? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would totally recommend this course, uh, especially for younger students in their second or third year. I think doing this course at an early age really opens your eye to a lot of opportunities. It, it builds in kind of an open minded attitude. And I think that's really important because, you know, in SAF, uh, you know, you're kind of sometimes pigeonholed into thinking this career is the best for you or, you know, I, I have to get this designation. But there's no absolute path really. And so when you go on a trip like this, it just shows you how much more opportunity there is outside of Toronto and in this world. And it really lets you, kind of, it sets the foundation for uh, the rest of your uh, career. So I think it's important. And especially being both a student and a TA, like I really got an appreciation for just how much value you get from this trip, um, from planning an international trip. Like it's not easy to plan something like that, um, as well as behaving during meetings and dinners with CEOs and just experiencing different cultures. Like these are things that you don't learn through a textbook. And um, I think this trip is an awesome way to get that experience. So last question, why AFM? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think for me, AFM is funny because in high school, uh, I actually wanted to go into life sciences and medical sciences. So obviously AFM wasn't uh, a top choice of mine. And so I was, you know, considering other schools where there was a program for sciences and stuff. But I thought to myself, the co-op opportunity here in AFM was really valuable. And I always thought to myself, I was better suited for business because I liked presentations. I liked communication. I liked uh, just talking to people. And so I, I visited campus and the campus was lovely. And I uh, got to meet Patty Ma and the recruitment team and really felt like I belonged here. And uh, at the time, they were offering a fellowship scholarship to me, and uh, that was really attractive too. And so I took the chance. I came to AFM and never regretted it since. I'm, you know, four years in now, and looking back, it's been one of the best decisions I've made. Uh, the co-op aspect is great. Like it's not every day that I remember. Like my first co-op was at Deloitte, and I was like, I think like 19 at the time. And it's not every day that you know you get to work with people at uh, that are like fully full accounts, like they got their CPA designation, they're 24, 25, they just came out of school and you're working with these people and you're here you are, you're just like a 19 year old student. And so it's incredible uh, to do this and the school gives opportunities to that. Uh, another aspect is just the innovation of Waterloo. Uh, sounds weird because you know you don't think of SAF or business as a very innovative field. You typically think of engineering or math and that kind of stuff, but yeah, business is very innovative and our school is working hard to stay in touch with the times. Like I know we're focusing on 
a lot on the environment environmental side. We're focusing on sustainability and how we can raise future leaders to um, address those issues in our world. And so business programs need to adapt and uh, SAF has really done that. So it's awesome to be a part of it and uh, really enjoy my time here in AFM. Thanks for listening to our AFM Ready podcast. For more information about the AFM program, you can go to our website at newwaterloo.ca slash SAF, or you can always check out our AFM Ready website, where you can chat with current students, read student experience blogs, watch tons of videos, plus so much more. All you need to do is click the link in the description box. Until next time. Thank you.